This video is by Straight Goods News. SGNews.com. Yeah, details. Uh, emails have been uncovered saying that six months after he joined the Senate, Mike Duffy was uh, talking about his expectations, hoping that he would become a cabinet minister without a portfolio so he could get a car and other perks. What's your reaction to this? Uh, it, I mean, this, this mess just continues to get messier. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the gall. Uh, of uh, uh, Mr. Duffy making that uh, that additional proposal, uh, and I, I gather explicitly saying that he should be minister without portfolio, uh, without any administrative responsibilities uh, for some department or agency of the government of Canada. This cabinet is already a bloated cabinet uh, that uh, that is probably now in dollar terms the single most expensive cabinet in Canadian history uh, to add a minister uh, who would actually have no responsibility to do anything except have a car and a driver and the other perks and expenses of, of office uh, it leads you to question uh, what he was going to do. This is going to be a full-time fundraising position, for example. You've been in cabinet before. Have you ever seen or heard anything like this? There, there have on occasion historically been ministers without portfolio uh, to satisfy uh, uh, regional coverage and that and that sort of thing, but it's, uh, it is certainly not a common practice and they are given something to do in the administration of the Government of Canada, not the administration of the party in power. That's the important distinction. Mr. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? It appears that Mr. Duffy has some pretty high expectations of what the party should and do for him. Mr. Wright, you know, so far above and beyond the post, he needs to give him about $90,000 of personal money. What was it about Duffy? What is, why is he so this, hard to You know, this, this is the... Know? This is the $64,000 question or the $90,000 question, or whatever the perks of office of a minister without portfolio <laughs> add up to be. Why? Uh, we and, and, and others in the House have been pursuing you know, the basic questions of journalism here, who, what, why, when, and where, uh, as, uh, as along with how, uh, but the most, the most vexing question is why? Uh, what what was there about Mr. Duffy's situation, uh, or his his connection to the Prime Minister, or his connection to the party? What was there uh, that that made the Chief of Staff, who is not a foolish person, made the Chief of Staff go so far as to engage in a secret ninety thousand dollar deal? that the Prime Minister says was patently wrong. What, what would cause uh, the Chief of Staff to put himself in that hugely vulnerable position? Uh, and that, and that's, that's, that's what I think has, has people just absolutely scratching their heads and leading people to the conclusion there is much, much more that we need to learn about this file in the public interest to, to be able to be satisfied about what's happening here. There are so many extreme circumstances that what's out there in the public domain so far cannot possibly be an adequate explanation. Mr. Goodell, you talked about the, the loyalty factor for those inside the PMO uh, kind of coming to, to defend Mike Duffy to Nigel Ray Cooney of this $90,000. Where do you think that loyalty comes from for Senator Mike Duffy? Good question. Good. Qu he must. His public activity uh, was uh, was about ninety percent uh, related to uh, uh, his his fundraising capacity. Uh, maybe they thought that was uh, exceedingly useful to them uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to try to put more. Uh, and it it, um, it it really in in one way leads you to conclude that that th this is a group that are so convinced of their own righteousness internally that any scheme, any breach of the, of, of, of the rules, uh, even going so far as to as to attempt uh, uh, sometimes potentially breaking the law, that all of that's okay because we're in pursuit of some grand ideological mission here. It's almost a messianic kind of kind of uh, obsession that they have with their own with their own virtue, um, and 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 Canadians will 
will, uh, will keep asking the questions, they'll keep being very angry about this situation uh, until, until the Prime Minister actually looks them in the eye uh, and, and without hyperbole, without red herrings, without personal abuse and character assassination, just answers the questions about what happened and, most critically, why. Speaking of Mr. Harper, he wasn't in the House today. He's probably not going to be back until Tuesday when he is in the House. He doesn't uh, necessarily answer all of your questions. Are you stuck here with, with you running out of time? I mean, the House will presumably rise next week. Aren't you unavoidably running into a story that's going to die? No, because, because this has touched Canadians in a very profound way. Uh, this is not an issue that will go away because of a summer vacation. Uh, this is an issue that I think Canadians are are uh, are absolutely riveted with, uh, and they are going to stay on this trail, whether the House of Commons is sitting, whether the Senate is sitting, whether there's an adjournment, whether there's a prorogation. Uh, Canadians are not going to lose interest uh, because they they suspect uh, that the public trust here has been badly, badly abused. And when you do that to Canadians, when you violate the trust of their vote, they are very unforgiving.